Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to be working on the lovely Julia and we're going to be doing a full back and shoulder and I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. Often when I am starting a back massage, I really like to start with um, some glutes, but I'm actually going to do some shaking to just help all the nerves to relax. And this also, um, it's really good for the hip joints and the spine. Um, I have some clients who get really fidgety and have a hard time sitting still. And sometimes I won't do this for them because it doesn't really help them relax. But I really like to do this when I can. especially for people that have tight hips, tight low backs, can be really helpful. You can also use one hand if you want. I just feel a lot more stable usually using two. and just always trying to weave these different techniques together in a way that feels natural and good. And really with any technique that you use, if you're tuned out when you're doing it, your client's definitely gonna feel that. So just offering full presence if you can. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a transition really like moving into compressions um, just feels like a really natural transition from there and I am supporting my wrist just to offer a little more stability you don't have to do that always when I'm working on the back I like to start with um, some glue work even if it's a minute or two on each side and that glute medius is often responsible for, you know, more back stiffness, more low back stiffness than people realize. And I'm working on someone who really likes deep tissue, so um, I'm easing my way into it, but I think I am going to use my elbow in here a little bit, which is actually significantly easier. It might look harder, but and you can use the rocking technique um, here as a distraction. Sometimes it just feels better. And really listening to any cues that Julia gives off if she's resisting that pressure then do I need to back up a little bit always working with your client and always encouraging my clients to stay engaged and um, to focus on that you know letting go because if they're tuned out, then it's going to be a lot less effective too. And again, you can just hold these compressions if you want. You don't have to rock. But definitely don't hold longer than 10 seconds. Focusing a lot on these erector spinae muscles and just doing some compressions, warming everything up. Okay. 
focusing on using a broad surface area. So um, that immediately kind of helps me to work on the soft tissue without overthinking it. Using my whole forearm, say, press in towards the spine. I'm not really just pressing down. And with the shaking, just find a rhythm that your client's comfortable with. Sometimes if you go too fast, it doesn't feel too relaxing. But don't overthink it either. Really, I'm just um, kind of listening to Julia's hips, seeing if they catch at any point. And just letting that movement travel all the way up the spine. When I'm doing that shaking, I usually stop pressing about here. I never start with my elbow, even if I know I'm going to use that technique. I just like to kind of gradually I've had clients who have been like 45 minutes late to a massage before and they just want five minutes of super intense whatever. That's a little different. But... And anywhere I can, I'm offering myself um, extra support, especially when I'm doing deeper work. And any time that somebody requests deep tissue in um, any area on the back, I work with my elbow as much as I can. A lot more than my thumbs or anything else. Taking a little more time, this medius, and I'll more than likely revisit this muscle using more of um, my elbow, my forearm here. When you're using double fists, you have more stability, which is always good. And not trying to do anything fancy here, just really warming everything up, a nice broad working surface. And so Julie has a pretty good idea of, that's kind of like the map for our massage. So there shouldn't be any really big surprises. But before I go in with my oil, I'm gonna do a little bit more dry work in this upper trap. And I'm gonna start using a little bit more of my, a little less of my form, not quite my elbow. But it's a lot harder to do this kind of work when um, with oil. I've had, you know, 60 minute massages where therapists have done all dry work and it can be really lovely, really, really healing, especially, especially myofascial work. I 
And one technique that I tend to forget about is tapping. I forget it's one of the best techniques you can use to increase circulation. So if you're working on someone who is dealing with any kind of numbness or tingling down the arm or that kind of sensation really anywhere on the back, just the simple technique of tapping is great for increasing circulation. I'm just trying to find a nice rhythm. And you can kind of localize that movement, make it a little more intense. Really focusing on the upper trap, those rhomboids. This is another thing I like to do um, without oil. I'm not slipping. I'll do it over a sheet usually. And I think we're ready for our oil. And always when I am kind of in transition, it's a chance for me to just take a breath, check in with my own um, body and posture. Effleurage is kind of the perfect way to get this oil on. I try to get the right amount of oil dispersed so they don't have to keep going back for more. And I like to, when I do back work, I like to just kind of bring broader strokes into the neck just to tie everything together. And focusing a lot on these muscles that support the spine, these erector spinae muscles. This is a great technique working with the muscle fiber along those three muscles can create a lot more length. And working my way into the medius a little bit too. Really um, encouraging my client to just feel that connection between the hips and glutes and back because they definitely affect each other a lot. Pressing in towards the spine, not really pressing down as much. This is a great way if you're new to massage and you're just learning about mid-back work. This is a really stable position to work from. You can get a really good idea of where these muscles are exactly before you start working with your elbows, which can be a little intimidating, especially when you're working so close to the spine. Nice long strokes. And I might need to grab a little bit more oil for my forms. I'm careful of leaning in too much, too close to my client, unless we have a lot of history. So you definitely want to just make sure your client's feeling comfortable. I'm 
I don't usually include the rhomboids, um, but they just don't really need deep tissue. Um, in most cases, I've found working on the upper trap and the rotator cuff muscles is kind of the most effective approach to upper back pain or neck pain. The rhomboids will usually follow the lead of the upper trap, the shoulders. I'm always just kind of asking myself how I can use my time most efficiently. But this is a great technique for including the rhomboids a little bit. And I am on those upper traps a little bit as well. I've had really tall therapists go all the way down with the elbows. Also, if your table's really low, it can feel really nice to go down further. And just making sure that my stance is nice and wide and I feel stable before I start to work with this one side. And just starting to, this is a um, great way to work a number of muscle groups, so the erector spinae, the lats, Not quite the QL yet, but I really like to finish that movement. And that movement in the glute medius. And again, um, Julia kind of knows what's coming. She kind of has that road map from her warm up. Shouldn't be any big surprises. And before I forget, I'd like to thank a few of our patrons. I'd like to thank Allie A, Caitlin, and Cheryl Diane. Thank you ladies so much for your support. We really appreciate you. This is a lot easier skin on skin, but Sometimes I'll work on clients, even if I'm working on somebody that's draped, I'll work over the sheet. Just kind of depends on my client's comfort level. And this is kind of a nice way for me to anchor myself, keeping my left arm down and just starting to get into these muscles a little bit more along the spine. And if I'm doing deeper work, a technique I really like to use is just supporting my elbow with the opposite hand. I feel really stable and the spine's protected. This can be a little bit tricky if you're working on somebody who is ticklish. So if I start to do this and my client's kind of fighting back, sometimes I'll just, I find that, um, this technique is kind of the best for people that are ticklish. Nice broad surface area using a little bit more pressure. And you just have a lot of control. So you can start kind of localizing your work a little more by lifting your forearm like the, a hinge. And I find that um, when these erector spinae muscles are really tight, you, it's really important to encourage them to relax away from the spine. And just sometimes that connective tissue along the spine can get really sticky as well. So just really encouraging everything to open and stretch a little more. And 
then always when I'm transitioning from one muscle group to the next, um, I just like to tie everything together as much as I can. Usually start with a nice broad stroke and then start to zero in a little bit more. And sometimes if I'm having trouble, um, if that upper trap doesn't feel as taut as I need it to be, sometimes I'll just um, pull that shoulder a little bit, keeping that elbow bent. Bring that shoulder down, can help. Depending on my client, sometimes um, this quicker kneading is a lot more tolerable than trigger point work. So I'll, I'll usually use some combination, but just uh, finding a rhythm and a way of working that kind of fits my, the needs of my client. really like you using the outer edges of my hand to just wrap around that scapula. And I'm going to do that same routine on this opposite side, more or less. I love working on the back with my forearm and elbow. It's my favorite. Just as you work your way down, kind of notice if any of the muscles fight back and kind of cater to that. Definitely the worst massage that I can think of getting is when this male therapist who's I had a few massages from him that were really good but one session he just like made up his mind to go as deep as possible and I think that you just really need to let your client kind of lead in that way because it doesn't feel good when you're not ready for deep tissue and your therapist kind of insists on it there's levels of deep tissue, but when I'm doing um, really intense work, like my communication is definitely even greater than it would be in like a Swedish or more relaxing massage. Sometimes this, um, when you support the spine, your movement can feel a little um, more constricted, but it's a lot more stable. You just have to kind of find what feels good to you. I always support my elbow if I'm doing um, deeper work and just I like the stability of it. That is, unless my client's really ticklish, then I gotta kinda mix things up. And it's really interesting when you're working on someone for the first time and you kinda start to feel different imbalances, so Noticing that um, Julia's mid thoracic on her left is um, significantly tighter. So that would be something to kind of talk about after the massage. Let's see, I like to kind of just get an idea of what ideas she might have, like why.
And everybody, no matter how well you take care of yourself, you're going to have some imbalances. And so it's nothing to feel bad about. And again, like I'm already feeling myself lean over too much. So just any pain in the low back as you're working is a sign that you need to widen your stance and straighten your back. And I really like to do um, that broader work before I introduce any work with my thumbs, just because I'm really alert to like what's going on and I'm not wasting my energy. I'm really just encouraging that um, muscle fiber to loosen. And um, I really like working on the levator muscles with my thumbs just because they can be really stubborn. You have a lot of sensitivity in your thumbs. And I'm going to go ahead and finish with some fascial work along the spine. So just something really simple I like to do after more intense work in the erector spinae is I just run my fingers with stacked hands right along the spine. Just hopefully getting rid of any stickiness that's still lingering, that connective tissue helping everything to stretch and let go a little bit more. You can do just one long broad stroke or you can do little micro strokes, whatever feels better. If you're starting to feel the heat build under your hands, that's a really good sign that the connective tissue is responding really well, but you don't want it to feel like a rug burn. So you just kind of have to use your sensitivity. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed today's video, you should check out our Patreon page where you'll find exclusive content. And I look forward to seeing you there. If you enjoy these videos, please join us at PsycheTruthPatrons.com for dozens of exclusive videos and premium programs. We have over a thousand videos you won't find on YouTube, such as modeling and fashion hauls, exclusive massage videos, ASMR, behind the scenes, bloopers, and much more. It's a great way to help us keep the cameras rolling so we can continue making the content you love. Patrons will get two to three new exclusive videos each week, so I hope you'll consider joining our Patreon family today. Just visit PsycheTruthPatrons.com.